Welcome along to the next episode of the I Photography Podcast. It is... Rebecca. Hooray! You should have seen the outtakes for that one. <laughs> um, and it's Stephen. And today we're, we're still on the photography topic, but we're looking at movies. Movies. Movie. <laughs> Are you a film fan in general? Do you know I'm not? No. I'm not a massive film fan now because, do you know, in honesty, I fall asleep. They're too long. Um, they're too long. I really struggle to pay attention. Give me a crossword any day or a Sudoku. She may look like she's in her 20s, but actually acts as she's in her 60s. It's, it's like the Benjamin Button, isn't it, the really? Opposite way around, yeah. <laughs> Young in body, old in mind. That's me. Oh, never wrong with that. But yeah, anyway, this is um, five great photography films. And there isn't many films that are about photography as a, as a central subject. Um, I think there's probably more than five anyway, but at least the ones that we kind of got listed down to kind of chat about um, very, very much have kind of photography at the, kind of the core of the, uh, the narrative really here. Um, I mean, if I scroll down and look at the titles, looking ahead... Have you heard of any of them? Have you seen of any of them? Not seen any of them. Wow. This is going to be a great podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I should have given you these in advance to actually kind of as a bit of homework. Yeah, you should have said this is homework for me. I, I've um, only seen, I've seen four of them. Okay. So there is one that uh, I, I've not seen before. But I think there's, there's definitely one that, that you'll really, really enjoy anyway, given uh, the photographers that, that I know that you like. But, okay. but a lot of these... Um, um, you'll find kind of online, some of them may still be on Netflix, I know one or two of them are, um, you may have to f find them on Prime, otherwise there may just be a trip to, I say, I say the DVD store. That, but I don't think that's a thing anymore. Is it not? No, I just stream it. That's just, <laughs> don't tell them to go to the black market and stream these things. <laughs> I meant on Prime, obviously. All right, yeah, well, no, that's fine, that's legal and such. I thought you'd be like looking for some sort of torrent download, but... <laughs> We've gone into somewhere that we don't really want to step into. But anyway, I mean, despite the popularity of photography, you know, as a hobby and a profession that, you know, it isn't depicted that much upon the silver screen. You know, we see loads of films about sports and families and jobs and business and whatnot. Why is there not enough about photography? It's quite geeky, I think. It is quite nerdy. There isn't much about many arts. If you think about maybe like painting there's not many kind of films about paint is it just because it's it's hard to kind of depict on film or is it's not exciting like yeah race cars or maybe dancing? it's because you're using photography equipment to film it that it's then becomes like photography section oh, so it's oh like a wow camera, a camera, camera and a camera and people just get to it's just too cope. well maybe yeah i think that's, that's probably a good point potentially there i think there's something in there definitely but i mean these, these are some that you know that, that stand out quite a lot as we said we've not we can't say we've seen them all. I've seen four out of the five of them anyway, but one of them is kind of very, very popular. I think, you know, you may have definitely heard of anyway that I've not seen. Um, but the other ones, I think you'd really like, I think especially the first one that we're going to come to, um, you really, really like, because this is a film from 2010 called The Bang Bang Club. And it's something I stumbled on Netflix a couple of weeks ago. So I think, you know, if it's what now, it's November. Oh, yeah, well, the, dog <laughs> the dog agrees with us. The dog agrees with us. So yeah, in November 2021, I think I maybe watched this a couple of weeks ago. So of October 2021, it was on Netflix. So George. if you have a look for that, we'll let the dog have his, have his say. Oh, so we've got with us today, this is George. George, naughty George. Naughty George. Naughty George. So George will be giving his rating of these films yeah. through his box. <laughs> Lots of box means it's good, no box means it's rubbish. <laughs> is that right? Oh, bless. You've been quiet. But anyway, yeah, The Bang Bang Club, this is from 2010. Um, so basically, it's a film adaptation of the book with the same name, or The Bang Bang Club, Snapshots um, from a Hidden War. Um, so it's written, or co-written, I should say, specifically, by Greg Marinovich and Zhao Silva. Um, do you know who Zhao Silva is? Can't say I do. He's a very, 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 very good friend. I'll say was a very good friend of one of your favourite photographers who you wrote your dissertation about. Uh, Tom Hunter. No, you told me a different person that you wrote your dissertation <laughs> about. You told me it was Kevin Carter. Oh, yeah, I have written a piece. It wasn't oh. my dissertation, but I have written All a right, piece. All right, you've read about him there. I'll let you off. But yeah, basically this story centralises around Greg Marinovich. I don't know how to pronounce that. Marinovich, yeah. Zhao Silva, Kevin Carter, um, and another guy called Ken Oosterbrook. And I think basically the, the story is kind of, it's, it's focused around these four guys. And they're four photographers who 
were South African. Yeah, dog agrees with us. Yeah. Um, and they were working and photographing uh, during the time of apartheid down in South Africa. So they were all kind of documentary photographers. They were working for a newspaper um, in South Africa. I've forgotten the name of it. It's like the Herald or the Star or something like that. And basically they were going out and they were kind of passing, you know, each other and they start to work in pairs and they effectively start to kind of then go out in groups of four because it was a bit more safer for them. And they were all going to the same places anyway, um, photographing these demonstrations and these riots and these fights between all the different factions that were, were there at the time. Um, and they, they, the, the kind of bravery to basically go out and take these photographs started to get them noticed. I mean, specifically Greg Marinovich, um, who's played by... Ah, what's his name? Have you seen Cruel Intentions? Ryan Philippe. Okay. Right, okay, have you recognised? No, I do, I've not seen Cruel Intentions. Right, so yeah, yeah, so yeah. it's basically the, the guy from there, so he plays Greg Marinovich. Um, and basically, yeah, they go out and they take these most insane photographs that start getting them noticed all over the world. And because they're always going out in this kind of group of four, um, they start to get this name, this kind of moniker of the Bang Bang Club. Um, which they didn't necessarily kind of care about really, um, but people were writing stories about them. And it was basically about how the, the, the work that they did, the photographs that they took, how it started to kind of bond them as a group. Um, it obviously told the story of what was going on in South Africa at the time, but also how it affected them um, kind of over time. Because you know a little bit about the, the backstory of Kevin Carter and his, yeah. his iconic image of the, uh, what was it called again? Uh, it's the vulture and... Um... The, the vulture and the child, yeah, or the vulture and the girl, child. yeah. Um, but that is documented in this in this film as well, basically about how Kevin Carter. I mean, it goes on about all of them, but specifically Kevin Carter gets quite affected by what goes on in South Africa. He's just shooting these war demonstrations and these riots, and he kind of he needs to kind of get away from it all. I think drugs and drinks start affecting him as well, and basically he goes on the secondment to oh, where was it taken? Was it like Ethiopia or Somalia or Sudan? Somewhere like that. I think there was some of this famine going on. Um, and it basically kind of shows him. And the guy that plays um, Kevin Carter, I can't think of his name now. I've seen him in a few different films before. Uh, oh, he plays... Um, Oh, no, it's not going to come to me. Sorry, <laughs> this is going to be great, great entertainment on the podcast. Come back in three um, weeks. I'll, I'll have to like I, IDBM it or whatever they call it these IMDb. days. IMDB, right. Bear with me. IMDB, because, yeah, if, if you want to know kind of who these people are, I think it's kind of worthwhile. And it's not to say that we don't research our things previously. Um, but, yeah, bang, bang club. Um, and, but yeah, basically kind of, he goes out to Sudan to take this kind of portrait, which kind of gets him all this kind of fame and notoriety. But as you know, kind of, it, it doesn't end well for Kevin Carter, it does he? Um, yeah, it end well. So yeah, so I've forgotten the, the name. Taylor Kitsch, that's him, Taylor Kitsch. Um, so he's been in like kind of, a, kind of quite a few different films before. I think that's, that's the right guy. Yeah. So he's been like Wolverine, John Carter. That was the what I was thinking uh, okay. of. Yeah. So yeah, he was been in the... Um, I've, not, I've not necessarily seen it, but um, but yeah, it's it's quite a moving story. It really, really is. It's kind of quite quite kind of emotionally driven. I can put the trailer on for you. You can watch the trailer in the meantime. I know we can't show this on the podcast necessarily, but just something for you to kind of watch in the meantime <laughs> to understand it all. Um, but yeah, it's it, it's just something that kind of I put on as like background um, kind of TV for a little while, but it kind of really caught my attention. I think definitely if you're into photography and you want to understand and appreciate what some photographers go through to kind of get the images that they do um, because even though this was about apartheid and apartheid is, is over in, in South Africa there's still loads of people that are going out there with a camera as war photographers would you ever consider such a, a life such a, a I think I'm probably too attached to things and I would I'd end up staying there and dedicate my whole life to it yeah I, it would have to be a full 100% move for me because I think I'd I just want to help everyone. I'm too nice. It, it is. I mean, the, the story of them is that these guys, they were just, they, they came across as being completely kind of carefree in the sense that they they would put themselves in harm's way to get the image, that the, the story of what they're trying to depict, you know, the, the riots, etc. cetera. Um, they would literally put themselves in the middle of it whilst gunfire and everything is going off. And a couple of them got shot. I, I think, I think uh, Marinovich got shot. Um, I think, you know, without spoiling the story too much, we should say, spoiler alert, <laughs> yeah. if anybody goes to watch this. Um, 
a couple of the guys die. Um, obviously, kind of, as we know, Kevin Carter, he commits mm -hmm. suicide. And I think it's the same. Uh, no, no, he doesn't commit suicide, but I think it is Kent Oosterbrook actually dies. He gets shot. Um, and this is in real life as well, obviously, this is a depiction of these real photographers. Um, so, yeah, I think the, the actual club kind of um, obviously you know, breaks up and disbands. Um, but yeah, two of them actually died, and I think Marinovic and Jao Silva, I think they're still alive today, still working, and I think, I think they may still be working in South Africa. Um, but yeah, it's, it's absolutely an amazing film to, to watch. So if you get to look out for the Bang Bang Club, I think it's like 2010, 2011, and it may still be on Netflix um, at the moment, um, say like November, October um, 2021. Kind of keep an eye out for it. Should we move on to another film? Yeah, definitely. Let's go for it. So the next one that we've got on our list is Kodachrome. Um, so this is like a small indie film um, that I've seen. I've seen it a couple of times over and it's got, again, I'm going to have to bring up IMDb for you here as well so I can actually tell you the name of people. I want to say his name is it's like Kevin or, no, it won't be Kevin. I'm trying to think of the actor's name because um, you'll recognise him. That's it, J Jason, Jason Sudeikis. Sudeikis? Do you recognise his face? Um, I recognise his name. You recognise his name. He's been in... Oh, I can't think of what he's been in now. But effectively, the, the synopsis for it is that the guy, um, who, the guy who plays Sudeikis is called um, Matt, Ry Matt Ryder. Uh, and he's basically a... Um, what do they call him? An A&R man at like a record company. So he goes around like looking for bands, etc, etc. And he's done kind of quite well and over his years, but he's starting to kind of be less kind of effective. He's not really kind of signing any bands and his, his company is like, you know, you're on the edge of your job, blah, blah, blah. And then um, he gets told that his dad is dying and he's not seen his dad for like absolute yonks. It's totally estranged from him. So there's kind of a lady who's his carer kind of comes into his life and says, like, you know, I look after your dad. Um, and he wants to meet up with you. He wants to go on a road trip. Um, his dad's this very, very kind of famous photographer, kind of fictionally speaking. He doesn't actually play anybody real. Um, and basically, he's always like, kind of, he's quite old school. He's always kind of shot on film. And he's basically got these last kind of set of Kodachrome films. And the story goes is that there's only one place in America in the entire world that is processing Kodachrome, and they're going to stop it like in two weeks' time. So they've got this kind of two week road trip to go together um, to get to this processing lab, which is like in the middle of nowhere. So it's all like a bit of a kind of a father son relationship journey, et cetera, et cetera, um, for him to go and kind of get these, uh, these images um, processed, et cetera. Um, again, spoiler alert, the dad dies <laughs> literally <laughs> right within the last kind of couple of minutes of the film. Um, and you can kind of see somewhat of it coming because it's all about a rekindling of the uh, the relationship. Um, that there is like one kind of little set specific set of uh, roles of film that he's been going on about. He's like, this is my greatest work ever. This is my best work ever. That you know, best pictures I've ever taken. And lo and behold, what do you think they end up being of him? Him. They end up being of his son when he's younger. To kind of give him that kind of heartwarming feeling with him looking back. It's like, oh, dad did care a little bit. Did it make you cry? It was a bit of a teary moment, but you kind of could see it coming a little bit. Not to say that it's not worth watching, and obviously if you don't mind spoilers and you, you'll watch past that, um, then, then do watch it anyway, because it's kind of quite a heartwarming film anyhow. Um, but yeah, kind of the, the idea of like taking images, etc., capturing moments and memories, which photography is all about, uh, is very much at the heart of it. So yeah, that, that, that's one to worth looking out for. I don't know if it's on Netflix. We should have Netflix up at the side here. Just so a double check. Just a treble check as well. I don't think it is. I, I remember kind of, uh, I don't even know if I've got an account that I can remember to log into. <laughs> we'll find it anyway. Anyway, so that's Kodachrome. So that's two. The next one is one that we, well, I've not seen before either. Um, have you ever heard of Rear Window? I have not. No, I have not. Let me just treble check if Kodachrome is actually on, or currently on, Netflix. Yeah, it looks like it is. Oh yeah, it's still there. Okay, so yeah, again, as of now, um, Code of Chrome is still there. You can go and watch it. Um, enjoy. And this next one is Rear Window. Yeah, I, I, I've not seen it. Um, I know of it. I know the premise to it, etc. It, you know, it's an Alfred Hitchcock masterpiece. It's a 1954 film. Um, and again, yeah, obviously he's got photography at the centre of it. And basically about a, a wheel-bound chair photographer who spies on his neighbours from his apartment and becomes convinced that one of them has committed a murder. 
You're quite into like ah, that sounds more on my of, street. Yeah, yeah, thriller, crime, yeah. etc. As well. I'm not into romance or father son relationships. <laughs> Don't want any of that. Give me the murder mysteries, and I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs> so we know what Rebecca loves in a film but yeah th this is you know as I say I've not seen it I, I very much kind of I'm very very aware of it you know in photography circles etc but it's got uh, Grace Kelly uh, Wendell Corey uh, Thelma Ritter uh, and obviously James Stewart plays the main character um, so yeah if you like a bit of Hitchcock if you like a bit of photography put the two together uh, and kind of see what comes out but yeah it's um, it, it's kind of as much as it's like an older film, it's 1954, don't let that kind of put you off, you know, be like your Hollywood effects, etc. It's just got a very, very good core story to it. Is um, it black and white or colour? Um, no, I think it is actually a colour film. Um, I may be totally wrong. There you go. Yeah, it looks colour. Yeah, yeah. So sometimes they go back and like they remastered these films um, over time. I think so. Or are we just having actually a... Maybe just we're just seeing adverts. like a yeah an advert <laughs> to Hitchcock there. Yeah, I apologise again without actually kind of seeing it. But the fact that a lot of his films are colour, some are some are black and white, they vary. I'm not 100% sure. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. <laughs> There's an answer there to be found. <laughs> that was a great answer. I think it is. I have a feeling I, it is. I'd say it is. I don't know. Yeah. We'll sign it. Anyway, 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 shall we go on to our next film? This one's really funny. I, I think you quite like this one. It's not crime or anything like that. It's just a little <laughs> bit of silliness. It's called Pecker. Um, it's from 1998. It's Edward Furlong. Um, do you know Edward Furlong? I don't. No. You've watched Terminator before? Oh, no. John Connor. Never heard of that? Oh, my word. I it's feel like I'm... Such... I'll be back. <laughs> No Terminator. <laughs> I don't know what that was. <laughs> no, well, uh, in Terminator, John Connor is like the the, the child that Terminator comes looking for, and that's played by Edward Furlong. Um, but basically, yeah, he's got Christina Ricci in, and you know Christina Ricci. I do, yes. She was um, in the Adams Family. Uh, she was... Um, Oh, Casper, Friendly Ghost. Yeah. You'd have yeah, watched yeah. that. Yeah, yeah I have. So basically, yeah, Peck, Peck is like this kind of teenage kid, and he gets a camera... Um, and basically he does is go around his like little suburbia town and photographs everything and anything you know it's kind of literally like a kid in a sweet shop he's, he's like, so excited he's got this camera photographs everything and it gets him into a lot of trouble as you'd imagine because yeah. he goes peeking through windows of the strip club and things like that taking photos um, he gets his family and friends to pose and he's and taking candid pictures of their life which I suppose it has like a kind of some sort of conversation about modern day you know, how much all your pictures in your life has lived out on social media. This was like someone taking pictures of your life with not knowing and then plastering it around for everyone to see. So I think there is kind of some sort of social aspect to it that's quite relevant still today. Um, but basically the idea is that he kind of, he takes all these pictures and they start getting a bit of notoriety. He does like a exhibition in a cafe and loads of these artsy fartsy type people from New York come along and they're like, oh my darling, this is amazing. This is fantastic. You know, those kind of pictures that you look at it and go, that's just a blurry mess. <laughs> yeah. And like, it's half a foot or something like that. Chopped off your head. Or yeah, but yeah. they were like, oh, this is so artsy. This is like 90s New York where like, honestly, you kind of, you just throw a shoe on a table. It's like, that's $20,000. I love it, darling. Give me another one. Um, but yeah, it goes absolutely crazy and off the wall and becomes super famous. But then all that kind of fame backfires on him because everybody that ends up in the pictures, all his friends and his family and his neighbors, they start hating him for mm. it because they're like, I don't want my life plastered around, you know, without Everywhere. people knowing, and I'm not getting any money for it. Um, so he has this kind of huge downward spiral um, and kind of come down from it. And then um, he kind of steps back from the fame and the, the, the money of it all. And he basically just goes back to taking photographs just for the fun of it, like he did to begin with. But it was all, I suppose, everybody else's kind of uh, fervor around him that kind of got him as famous as he did. So. Yeah, I, I, it's quite a fun film. It's quite silly. It's quite wacky. Um, yeah, and it's it's something that if you're into like your nostalgia, if you like the what 1998. Yeah. How old were you then? I was four. Oh, <laughs> oh I've just aged. I've aged. But anyway, I don't think that one is on Netflix. I don't think it's on Prime. It may be a trip down to the old Blockbuster. <laughs> Show your I reckon there. block. I'm sure blockbusters exist somewhere. Maybe not in the UK, but 
Mm. I reckon it probably they still they are reckon the North Pole where they just missed <laughs> one out. <laughs> just have got to close it. <laughs> so our last film, um, I, I'm thinking this is on Netflix. I'm sure it's maybe on Prime because I've seen this not long ago. So it's called One Hour Photo. This is Robin Williams. You know Robin Williams. Don't I do you? know Robin. Williams. Not personally speaking. Well, no, me and Albert Einstein didn't talk about Robin Williams too much. <laughs> You'll have to listen back to a previous podcast to understand what Rack is going on about with her love of Albert Einstein. Um, but yeah, basically this is, it's a very dark film for someone that's associated a lot with comedy. Mm. It's not Robin Williams kind of... Not the genie. Not, not yeah. the genie. No Mrs. Doubtfire. <laughs> <laughs> this is very much dark, dark Robin Williams. And you, I suppose given how life went for him in the end as well, you start to look at these films and think, you know, did he take on these films and these roles because he was feeling that little bit dark and, mm. and kind of off, etc. cetera. Um, but yeah, it's, it's like what they were branded as a psychological thriller. So he works in a supermarket and they have like a, you know, a photo development kind of counter. Um, so you know when you have like your old disposable cameras and you go in and say, oh, can you take, do my pictures, etc. Do you remember that? I do, you, yes, you, I do. You were, you were old enough to remember that? Oh, I'm so That's glad you at nuts. least remember disposable films. <laughs> um, but yeah, basically he go in there and there was this family that took pictures all the time. So they go in like weekly or whatever and he got to know them really well. I do feel like I know the storyline. He like, thinks he's like part of their family eventually. Yeah. yeah, I do know the storyline. So he starts like, again, spoiler alert. <laughs> Should have said this at the very start for all these films. <laughs> yeah. But he basically makes copies of their pictures that they submit. Um, so they get their copies, but then he kind of hoards a copy and then his house has just got pictures all over the wall so of scary. loads of different people. Um, you know, and he's basically kind of living his life, which is very mundane. He basically goes to work, comes home, but he gets more and more, like you said, involved that he wants to become a part of them. And then I think there's a story that develops like a subplot that he thinks the husband is cheating on her. And he wants to kind of find out if this is true because he doesn't like the idea of this perfect family being broken apart by this, the dad having the affair. And he basically goes off the rails, he goes totally mental. Um, and he ends up getting to a hotel room where the husband and his, and his mistress, because he is having an affair, um, are. And he ties them up and everything like that. And you're basically led to believe that he's, like, he's killed them. Um, but he, he kind of gets to the point where he, he can't actually go through with the act, etc. And everything that's kind of all revealed as to kind of how he's been and whatnot. Um, but yeah, it's very, very dark for, mm -hmm. for someone that's kind of as, as popular as he, as he was and known for his kind of comedy. It's not, it's not a funny film in any sense of, uh, sense of purpose. But again, a little bit like Pecker, I think it's got that social aspect to it where people can kind of, you know, you worry a little bit yeah. when you put pictures of your life online that who is actually watching it. Is anybody doing anything with those pictures, etc.? Because it's all there for the world to see, isn't it, really? That's it. Which and is quite scary. It's never deletable in a sense. You can delete a picture, but has it really gone? Yeah. You know, there's always data and information kept somewhere, and you're thinking, well, yeah, how much of my life is actually kind of out there for other people to, to see and to buy and whatnot? So, yeah, if, if, you're, um, if you're a person of kind of creature comforts and you don't want to kind of <laughs> embrace the real world and these harsh realities, this is maybe not the film to watch necessarily. <laughs> But if you like kind of being scared out of your wits and having a bit of a horror film um, and basically kind of panicking at anybody that walks bit. past your door, yeah. then definitely watch this film. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, that's it. That's our five. Is there any others that you would you would kind of throw into the ring or just any other films in general that you think anybody would like to watch at the minute? <laughs> <laughs> we might as well do a film <laughs> review. <laughs> just start from all films. Um, no, I don't think so. I mean, other than... The cinematography of kind of every other film there is at the moment. Mm. Um, the way they're all shot and things like the, yeah. the newest cats, there's a lot of effects on that one as well. It's, it's very green screened, but it's very obviously green screened. Oh, in a um, good way or a bad way? Mm, bits, bits of both. Uh. Um, but And then again, there's uh, the new James Bond oh, yes. film on that. It's fantastic. Seen that. That's and, great. And the other, the other way. So um, I, th I do think that I can see the beauty of films and I can see the effort that it goes into, but I still just fall asleep. <laughs> Nothing can keep her awake, I'm afraid. I'm glad she stayed awake for this podcast, at least. So Just thank you very, very much for uh, staying awake. She's going to go and have her 30, 30 winks now. And uh, <laughs> we'll be back next week with another podcast. 
Um, thank you very, very much for joining us, Thanks staying for awake. Coming. We'll bring you a coffee for the next episode. Yeah. Thank you very much, Dogs, as well, for staying asleep and staying as calm as you did before. Oh, he's fast asleep now. He was that. having a little dream during the last oh, one. Yeah. <laughs> he's probably freaking out now that I've told him the plot to that one-hour photo. <laughs> <laughs> not going to go and get his pictures uh, processed at Asda, are you? Robin Williams is not going to process well, that's your photos. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very, very much for watching and listening to the podcast anyway. Um, if you haven't subscribed, please do. We have fun like this every week and we do talk more seriously about Sometimes. Kind of photography topics, etc. as well. <laughs> um, but yeah, thank you very, very much. It's been absolutely lovely kind of having you along for the chat. If you want to get in touch with us, you can do via email. We're on tutor at iPhotographyCourse.com. If you go to www.iPhotography.com forward slash podcast, you can find loads of information about our courses, our memberships, all the other bits and wonderful things that we do here at iPhotography. Um, but for now, we will see you in the next show. See you shortly.